We broke the world. Our early experiments in time travel released massive amounts of chronal radiation into the time stream with devastating results. As the particles traveled back through time, they altered countless seemingly insignificant decisions throughout history. But where causality is concerned, nothing is insignificant. The result is the radioactive nightmare of a world that lies beyond the protective screens of this facility. If we are to have any hope of restoring the time stream, then we must employ the very cause of the problem itself, time travel. But we must be very cautious, for the risks of direct interference are potentially greater than what we have already faced. We must surgically alter the past, correcting the decisions that were corrupted, and leave it to the butterfly effect to restore the future. This is not an easy task, as many, many events were changed. And if we succeed completely, then we may wipe ourselves out of existence. But if humanity is saved, then that is a price worth paying. Hello guys, my name is Afax and welcome to a game called Eternal Threads. This is a first person story driven puzzle game of time manipulation, choice and consequence. We are tasked with fixing corruption in what's called the time stream, where we've been sent to the north of England in May 2015, where six people have unfortunately died in a house fire. We simply can't stop the fire, um, but we must instead manipulate the choices made by those six housemates in the week leading up to it so that they all survive the event. So it looks really, really interesting. The pictures that I've seen and the footage that I've seen is basically you are in, I guess, present day. You're walking around the burnt out building of and the six people with some sort of device in your hand where you can watch scenes if you will of what happened leading up to the event of the fire over like a week spanning period you have options and you can change certain outcomes and, and things like that to basically try and get it so that all six housemates weren't in the building at the time of the fire i guess other than that don't really know much about it other than the fact that it looked really unique and really different so i figured we'd give it a go so that being said, sit back, relax, and let's get started. Generation fueled by creation. We live lives on a small screen nation. We control the airwaves, no negotiation. I refuse to think we need saving. Something good will come from. Ah, oh, hello there, 43. I see you are fully qualified now. Huh? Hey, that's very good. Good. Well, okay, let's uh, let's find you a real mission then. Hey, ah, tier three. That's not too difficult. It's one location. It's good, good. Um, six erroneous fatalities. Could be worse, 43. Okay. To fix this timeline, all six subjects must be saved, and you are only authorized to alter the decisions they made in the week before they died. Change the right set of decisions. And you save them all. So, let's find somewhere to drop you with no witnesses. Busy. God, busy always happens to me. Wait, ah, oh, wait, okay, we got something, 43. It's a few hours afterwards, it looks clean. Mm, it's dark though. Don't worry, I'll send some lights. Let's get you when and where you need to be. Initiating crossover sequence. Temporal crossover in five seconds. I'll see you on the other side, 43. Three, two, one. Temporal crossover initiated. Light drones inbound. Light drones crossover complete. Ah, still in one piece, 43. Good. Good, right, okay, let's get you set up. Activate your visualizer. Location, Alderbeck, UK. 
Temporal Reference, 4.03 a.m., 20th of May, 2015. Perfect. Now you'll probably need some boosters, okay? Your system will be checking now. Please place Earth Signal Booster at location indicated on Visualizer. Uh, what did I say, huh? Okay, 43. You just need to head towards that little white dot on your visualizer. Do you understand? No! What little... Oh, that little white... Okay, right. Okay, right. Okay, cool. We're on. So we're in the dining room. This is the dining room. It's a very nice dining room. Uh, What do we do? Press F. Okay, I did that. Incidentally, 20th of May is my birthday. And in 2015, I'm not going to tell you how old I was because it's going to make me upset. Does that say SCP on his arm? <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks. No, don't like it. Don't like it. Okay, I did that one. Please place second. Okay, we got another one. So we got to do another one in the living room, which I'm guessing is through here, right? F. Open the door. Get on the floor. Everybody do the dinosaur. There's two beer bottles on the windowsill. That's nice. There was a party going on at some point. So I don't know if we're in a family's house or if it was a house with like tenants in or you know if they were all connected in somewhere. I don't know. Um, but it seems like it's a pretty decent big house. Please place final signal booster. Okay, so this is off the half landing. I take it, is it? We're going upstairs. Different floors. If the target of the visualizer is located on a different floor, the white dot will be replaced with an arrow. An up arrow means the target is above you, while a down arrow, you've guessed it, means the target is below you. Thank you, video game. I was going to struggle with that one because it is me. Oh, here we go. If this is like the entire game, I'm going to be absolutely fine. I can't help but think it's not though. And I can't help but think it's going to be rather complicated for my teeny tiny brain. But we'll give it a go. That's what I've got you here for, isn't it, guys? You can help me as we go along. Because <laughs> I'm going to need all the help I can get. Right, what are we doing? Is it working? Oops. Hello. Okay. Scan complete. Corruption detected. Oh, excellent. Six fatalities confirmed. Conclusion event determined. Location transfer to visualizer. Okay, we're going to go in the hall apparently downstairs. Ah, the system is Ooh, hello! Okay. Fireman Go Sam! Target on your visualizer and we can see how the story currently ends. Okay, what? What do I want it? What do I need to do? Oh, hello. Okay, I can press F. So Wednesday the 20th at 154 a.m. That's when the fire happened, right? Oh dear me. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Oh great goo goo moo goo! Okay, that's a lot of fire. Oh, third guy's coming in. Just gonna get out your way, lad. Acting cameraman. They're all going in the living room. Okay. Oh, fourth guy's coming in. Where are you going? You're going this way, are you? I'll get out your way. Okay, he's going up the stairs. Kirsten is saying this has major repercussions further down the timeline. Which is why you are using a scalpel instead of swinging a axe. Analyzing timeline. Evaluating events. Time map available. Ah, good. Okay. Open up your time map and I will talk you through it. Okay, view the time map. Here's the end of the time map, 43. The large hexagon is a conclusion event, and you can return here and rewatch it at any time. 
Small hexagons are the final events for each of the subjects. If you change someone's fate, then both their final event and the conclusion event will change. The white events are all part of the current timeline and can be watched at any time and in any order. The grayed out events are potential events from alternative timelines and cannot currently be watched. If you change a decision which alters the timeline, some events will change state from one to the other. Once you have watched a decision, 43, it will appear on the map as a diamond, so it is easier to find it again later. The portraits at the top will show you who is in each event as well as whether they are alive or dead on the current timeline, 43. And this is the earliest event on the timeline. Like the rest, it currently has a question mark because it has not yet been watched. While well, normally you can choose any event in any order, 43, let's just start here for now. Select this event, and I'll check everything is working as it should. Do you understand? Kind of. So, we've got a full massive timeline to play with, right? And then all of the events that are white, we can actually watch Just now. I know I'm trying to explain it to my audience. Leave me alone. And I'm trying to explain it to myself as well. Um, And then the potentials that are blacked out, we can watch them once we've made decisions to make them white, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Shut up. All right. I'm doing it. So I'll do. Let's go. Right. We're going to Tom's room, apparently, which is down here. Day I think. One, Wednesday, 0800. Location, there we go. Tom's room. Oh, hi, hi, Tom. How are we doing? F? Okay. So this is Wednesday the 13th at 8 a.m., a week before the fire. I mean, yeah, he's, he's looking better. Aren't you, Frank? Aren't you, little Frankie? No. It's not as often. He's, he's still pulling out his feathers every now and then. Yeah. I talked to the vets. They want to keep him overnight. I just... I just don't know if that'll cause him more stress, you know? Decision 43, this is fortunate. You should try and change it, okay? So we can make sure everything is working properly. Yes? Okay, so we've got the current timeline, which says wait and see if Frank gets better on his own, or we can change it to the alternative, which is book vet appointment for Frank. So we're going to press on two and see what happens, right? Did I do it? Oh, please tell me I didn't blow it up. Yeah, you're right. They had an appointment for next Tuesday, so I'll book him in for them. So, sorry, that's that's the door. I've got to go. I'll speak to you later. Bye. Okay, bye. Oh look, forty-three. The birdcage is gone. Good. 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 Okay. This means your visualizer is working properly and you're fully able to change the timeline. And as a bonus, the little birdie also gets to live too. <laughs> Everyone's a winner, eh? <sighs> anyway, probably best to head back to the time map and select another event. Yes? Right, okay, so I get it. So because the birdie now gets checked in at the vets the day before the fire happens, so he gets checked in on the 19th, the fire happens on the 20th, the morning of the 20th, he's at the vets, or she's at the vets, so they live. Okay, right, start to make some sort of bloody sense. Navigating the time map. To move quickly around the time map, press and hold the left mouse button while on an empty area of the map, and then drag left or right with the mouse. Alternatively, you can change the viewpoint to a different day by selecting the day indicator at the bottom of the map. Okay. Tom decided to book a vet appointment for his budgie smuggler. Budgie, sorry. So, we can do this in chronological order, or we can do this in random orders, right? So, that's Monday, 
No, that's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so on and so forth. Okay. So did they say something like you can watch this as it is now, right? I don't know if this is really what I should do right now because I don't really want to see six people die in a fire. This shows the current status of the mission and can also show the individual bios for each of the characters. Highlighting the central hexagon will display the current mission status. Moving to the outer ring of hexagons and then around it will show the current bio for each of the highlighted characters in turn. Both the mission status and the individual bios will change based on the current settings of events on the timeline. To actually watch the conclusion event again, select one of the characters and you will be returned to the house as if you had selected a normal event. While all of the characters will appear in the conclusion event, the one you selected will provide the target for your visualizer. Okay, I don't feel like clicking on that as of right now. Um, at 1.45 a.m. on Wednesday, the 20th of May, 2015, Lancashire Emergency Services received multiple phone calls about a fire at 14 West Park Road. The alert was passed to the closest responders, Alderbeck Fire Station, at 1.46 a.m. Fire crews were scrambled and the engines left the station at 1.47. That's a very quick turnaround time. Paramedics were also alerted and dispatched to the property. The fire services arrived at West Park Road at 1.53, so six minutes later. Quickly set up a perimeter and breached the property at 1.54, so a minute later on. While initially intense, the fire was limited to the main hall and landing areas and was extinguished quickly. Smoke damage, however, was extensive. The source appeared to be an electrical fault in the consumer unit. Unfortunately, all six occupants of the house died during the fire, with the primary cause appearing to be smoke inhalation. Their bodies were removed and taken to St. Agnes Hospital, Olderbeck, for further examination and post-mortems. Okay, we're going to go back away from that, and we're going to go all the way to the beginning of the timeline, and we're going to click on event number two and see what happens. I think just for the time being, because we can do, we'll just do everything in chronological order. So I press on F. And this next scene one, is one, out in the hallway, eight, right? Oh, oh, here we go. Hall. Got you. Uh, can we... We stick on with... Hang on. We stick with Tom, right? Just stick with Tom. Hiya. You must be Linda. Come in. Oh, thanks. Hiya. Hi. Well, it's good to see you. Oh, and you. It's good to be here. Oh, uh, this is Tom. He's the landlord. Don't know what I would have done without you. Uh, look, I've just got a spare room. That's not all your stuff, is it? Oh, no. There's more in the car. Keys? Right. Back in a minute. Okay. So, uh, how about a quick tour? Lead on. Okay. So, crossing the threshold. Okay, so we've got Tom, who's the landlord. landlord. Uh, raise and lower the visualizer. Okay. Oh, hello. Right, okay. So, we've got Tom, who's the landlord. We've got Neil, who is a tenant, I'm presuming. And Linda and Neil both know each other, but Linda moved in a week before the house fire on the 13th of May. Incidentally, that's my grandmother's nana i don't know why i call them a grandmother my nana's birthday god rest her soul raise and lower your device you can raise or lower your device by pressing the right mouse button the device must be raised in order to watch the currently selected event okay dokey right so we're gonna go back here linda arrived at the house met up with her brother neil ah okay and was introduced to tom so linda and neil uh connected by brother and sister neil was staying with tom Linda needed a place to stay last minute, it would assume. Um, so if we go to event number three, where we're doing the tour in the kitchen, I imagine, Day which one. is Wednesday. over here Day somewhere. Location. Oh, there we go. Kitchen. Okay. Go straight to Tom. Oh, hello. Okay, so I think there's... Okay, there's, there's things that we can open. We'll do that at a later stage, but for the time being, let's just focus on the task at hand. And again, back up, because I'm camera Here's operator. Guys, this is Linda. Hi. Linda, Hi. this is Ben and Jenny. Like the ice cream? <laughs> That's us. We're just so sweet, aren't we, honey? Oh, we certainly are. Though, I'm also a bit late for work. Dr. Ben, I presume? Oh, the uniform. 
Well, that, along with your excellent bedside manner with the young lady in pyjamas. Oh, she called me young. She can stay. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't. See you tonight. See you. And I guess I'll see the two of you later as well. Yeah, take it easy, mate. See you. Right, time to see all of them. Interesting. Okay, so we've now also got Ben and Jenny, who are a couple. Like the ice cream, question mark? Yes, exactly like the ice cream. Um, right. So, we've got... Hang on, this is getting complicated now. There's six people. So, we've got Ben and Jenny, who are together. Neil and Linda know each other. And obviously, Tom's the landlord. So, who and where is Raquel right now? While showing her around the house, Tom introduced Linda to Ben and Jenny. Okay. This is going surprisingly well so far. We're going to go and do event number four in Linda's room. Wednesday, 8. Oh, Which is location. upstairs. Linda's room. Okay. Oh, she's going. She's off to the right, is she? Oh, oh, she, look at this. She gets her own private room off to the side. Hello, guys. Right. F. Here we go. Literally just a few moments later. Um, we're upstairs. This is so was it hmm? the previous tenant born to rock? Well, he certainly wasn't born to stick around and pay the rent, but I doubt it. Why? He's left his guitar. I'll get rid of it all for you. Oh, here we go. Rewatching decisions. If you rewatch your decision, a button will appear next to your device. Pressing this button will pause the event and allow you to select the outcome without having to wait until the decision point. If you change the decision, the event will jump forward to the decision point and then continue onward, showing you the new result and the ending. What? Okay, so we've got a choice to make. We can either leave the guitar and posters, which is what it is, or we can do the alternative ending, which is take the guitar and posters away. I think just for the time being, we're just going to do number two. Give her her own space? Yeah. I know I'm not in Kansas anymore, but my days as a rock chick are way over. <laughs> sure thing, Dorothy. <laughs> Uh, where'd you want these? Oh, just put them anywhere, Toto. Oh. Okay, interesting. So, I'm, I'm guessing that that has no massive outcome later on down the line, although I could be wrong, because the game is maybe just getting me used to, like, you know, the, the way the game works and everything. But I imagine later on down the line, when we do make choices, A is going to give a different outcome to B. Um, so there might be a bit of like snags and, and, you know, messing about and experimentation, I think. Hello. While we're here, we may as well just have a look at stuff. Kieran, look, love, it's not forever. Like I have explained, I'll see you Saturday. How was school today? Okay, I guess when you're coming home, mum. What have you had for tea? Pizza again. Mum, you promised it would be soon. I'll pick you up from school tomorrow and then we'll go home. You're coming home for real for good? Yes. Brush your teeth and go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Love you too, mum. Okay. So, Linda had a son, Kieran. I presume this is Linda's suitcase, right? Um. So, she might be going through some sort of messy breakup or something. That's a nice picture. Is there anything on the back? No. Okay. Window's open, though, and it's a bit drafty. Can we do anything over here? We can. We can open a drawer with nothing in it. So, she's got a card. Pair of shoes, a receipt, a pen, a clock, uh, two cans, and a TV remote for that TV, I guess. Okay, I think we've clicked on. Oh, hello, maybe not. Oh, hello, what is going on? You weren't making much sense last time that we spoke. Hang on, can we read this in a better. Oh, gosh, okay, transcribe. There we go, ah, there we go. What's going on? You weren't making much sense last time we spoke. Then I come home to find you gone, and a note stuck to the fridge saying you're leaving me. Kieran read the note, you know. He's really upset. As you're not answering your phone, I asked Anthea to pass this note to you. I just want to talk without shouting and screaming. I know you've been under a lot of pressure at work, and that's what's really caused all this. I told you it was a mistake going back. It's just too demanding when you've got me and Kieran to look after as well. Please, let's just meet up and talk anytime, anywhere. But let's get over this and back to normal for Kieran's sake. Call me Harry. Okay. So... Linda also goes as Lynn. That makes perfect sense. Can't click on that. I thought I could. Let's go through the drawers. 
Right. Okay. So Linda or Lynn is starting to make some sort of sense. So she was married or had a boyfriend called Harry, who she was looking after, as well as Kieran, her son. Um, what are we doing next? Linda was introduced to her room and agreed to let Tom tidy up a little. Let's go to event number five. We're just going to do this in chronological order. And we've got two potentials here. And then we're on to Thursday, the 14th of May. Okay. Where are we on now? Hall. Oh. Here we go. Uh, where's my mate? Oh, we're on Ben now. Wait, what? Hang on. Hang on, 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 hang on. Oh, is this a... I thought we were focusing on Tom. Portraits and filters. I've buggered it up already. The portraits at the top of the time map will highlight to show which characters appear in each event, as well as whether that character is alive or dead at the end of the current timeline. These portraits can also be used to filter the time map, Select a portrait or multiple portraits, and the time map will only show the events in which those selected characters appear. Right. So, again, just for the sake of it. No. I was going to say, should we just stick? Ah, I'm just complicating it for myself now. Should we just stick with Tom? Let's just stick with Tom for the time being. So, he's had the interaction with Linda. Uh, and then he's on the landing, apparently. Right, let's go back up. There we go. We've got a few people coming to the party. That's the bathroom, and this is my bedroom. Oh, what a nice view. Morning. Morning. Hi. Who was that? I have no idea. Oh, hi. I'm Raquel. You must be... Jealous. Uh, this is, um, Linda. My sister. So I guess she knows all your childhood secrets then. Oh, I could tell a tale or two. Leave them alone, you two. Spoil sport. We can talk later, but now I suppose I'd better go throw some clothes on. Okay. Right, okay, so that's Raquel. Bathroom stranger, Zach was his name, I think, judging by the subtitles. So, now that we're here, let's try and go into Raquel's room. Oh, it's locked. Okay, so we need a key to get into Raquel's room. Summer Bowl, 5th of June, 2015. So this is going to happen a couple of weeks later on. Um, okay, so whose boudoir is this one then? This is Neil's, right? I think. Okay, I'm, 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 I can explore this at a later stage. I'm just trying to gather where everyone is. So we've got the bathroom here. We've got Neil. We've got Raquel. And then whose is this? Uh, oh, hello. Jenny. Okay, so this is Jenny's room. And I guess she had this with Ben. Not really exploring right now. I'm just going to continue with Tom's stuff. So we've got Linda up here. Then we've got Tom downstairs. So that's all six, right? Ben and Jerry are together in a room. Neil's upstairs. Linda's also upstairs. Tom's the only one downstairs. Right. Linda met Raquel and everybody met Zach. Right. So we can't do anything else with Tom until number 10, which is also in the kitchen. Day one. About West. half an hour or Nine so one. later. Location. Movement Location. speed. If you need to move more quickly around the house, hold shift while moving. Why would you need to move quickly around the house? I hope that doesn't mean that. We need to run for something later on down the line. It didn't say anything about this being a horror game. Sorry. You ready? Yep. Let's go. You two off. We are. Uni. What are you doing Friday? 
Oh, yeah, we're having a house party here on Friday. Oh, I, I don't know. You can't just sit in your room. But I don't have anything to wear. You don't need it. Ray and I will be dressing up, but no one else will. But there's got to be something you can borrow from us. I'm not going to fit into anything either of you two own. <laughs> we'll figure something out once we get back tonight. Yeah, we'll sort it. we got to go. Yeah. See you tonight. See you both later. Nothing to wear. Okay, so Raquel and Jenny went to the same uni as each other. Maybe in the same class. I have no Scooby-Doo idea. But I'm sure we'll find out later on down the line. Just before leaving for university, Jenny and Raquel told Linda about the party. So there's a party on the Friday the 15th of May. Right? Um, so now we're going to fast forward to event number 11, which is Linda's room. And it's about half an hour later after Day the interaction. One, In the kitchen. 932. Location, Linda's room. Which is over here. F. Oh, yeah. What's in the box? Well, that's what I wanted to show you. You said you didn't have anything to wear to the party? Yeah. Didn't really have much time to grab anything besides my work clothes, some jeans and tops for lounging around in. Well, there's some dresses and stuff in there. Might fit. I'm a little scared to ask, but are they yours? No. Oh, no. They're my mum's. She won't. She doesn't need them anymore. I can't. Yes, you can. I was just going to throw them out, but she'll be glad someone's getting some use out of them. Okay, I'll take a look. Good. They might need some work, but I'm sure Jenny and Raquel can help you spruce them up a bit. Thank you. No problem. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a date with some reality TV. Okay. Enjoy. Yes, Tom. I hope it's either Math Suck or Math Sow. Married at first sight, thank you very much. Or, love is blind. A dress for Cinderella. Okay. So then keeping again with the tradition of Tom. Knowing she didn't have much with her, Tom gave Linda some of his mum's old clothes. So, we're going to do event number 12. Living room. Day one, Wednesday. Oh. 10.30. Location. Living room. Okay. The clock just made me jump a little bit. Hi, guys. Don't be an idiot. Is he putting the world to rights? Daytime TV annoys me so much. That's probably why I like it. <laughs> Are you off? Just thought I'd go for a walk. Well, if you go left at the main road, there's a post office and a couple shops. Go right, and there's a 24-hour garage. Oh, I wasn't looking for anything in particular. Just fancied a wander to get my bearings. Sure thing. You get your phone on you. Give us a ring if you get lost. Oh, thanks, Dad. See you in a bit. See you. Oh. Oh. What are we doing, Tom? Where are we off to? What are we up to? Going for a walk. Who are you talking about? Tom or Linda? Right, hang on. I think we've got another one. Tom offered some directions and Linda went for a walk around the local area. But where the feck did he go? Basement! There's a basement! Okay. Let's go and find out where the bloody hell this is. Yeah, it's downstairs. Thanks, game. How do we get to it? Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 here we go. What is Tom getting up to? I assume that doesn't work. I'm going to turn it on anyway. Oh, hello. I'll turn it off. Ah! Where were you going? That was a really, really small clip. Okay. You went in this room at the basement, right? Okay, hang on. 
Alone in the house, Tom went down to the basement. Excellent. Hidden room? Okay, this will be interesting. Day one, Wednesday, <gasps> 1104. Oh, is it Location. in the cupboard? Hidden room. This is like Narnia. This is amazing. Three, three, uh, I'm, I'm detecting some form of temporal abnormality. It does not appear to be in this room, but what does that mean? very close, so uh, please watch out. What does that mean? I'm just... I've just played a game about anomalies. Anomalies. I can't even bloody say it. It wasn't very pleasant. Oh, is that why we have to run? Oh, oh, it's locked. Why lock an old wardrobe in the basement? Uh, how curious. Because it takes us to a hidden room, mate. That's what it is. Oh, right. We need a bloody key. Right, okay. Um... It's not going to be in there, is it? It'd be amazing if it was. Barbara Monroe, Certificate of, Ele of Elevance, of Excellence, Photographer of the Year Award. Is Barbara... I mean, is, is Barbara Tom's mum, maybe? I don't know why anyone else's certificate would be here. I mean, Tom owns the gaff, right? Oh, hello. Still in the box. Oh. I believe 43... That this is what they call irony. Yes, they do. Have we got anything else? Oh, hello. In this weird basement. Local girl does good. I thought it said local girl goes missing then. Read. I mean, transcribe. Oh, bloody hell. This is long, isn't it? Residents of the small town of Alderbeck are celebrating after one of their own scoop, the prestigious Sterling Photography Prize, last night in a glamorous award ceremony in Manchester's Grand Hotel. Oh, that's where I am! Barbara, not in the hotel, that'd be weird. I mean, I could be. I mean, who knows? Barbara, room 206. Barbara Monroe, 28, the daughter of a local mill workers. Uh, the daughter of local mill workers, okay. Got her passion for photography from her father, who gave Barbara her first camera and encouraged his daughter to pursue her gift. Before long, her obvious talent secured her first place at the prestigious London Art School. Ooh. Here she flourished and was soon freelancing for some of the country's biggest magazines and newspapers. Her photographs have been described as bold and uncompromising with a style that has a knack of capturing a side of society that often makes for uncomfortable viewing. While her career as a freelance photojournalist has gone from strength to strength, her recent arrival in the art world has also been met with great success. A recent exhibition of her work in Manchester has been hailed as a triumph. After the award ceremony, I spoke to Barbara about her feelings, her work, and what the future holds. To be honest, I'm shocked, really. I mean, I was honest to be even nominated, but to actually win? I feel very humbled. However, I don't think it's going to change me. I'm just going to keep taking the pictures I want to take. Hopefully, though, recognition like this will allow me to pursue the issues that I'm more passionate about. Uh, there's no more there, but I'll just add libbing. And it also might help to encourage other women into photography and photojournalism. Recently married, Barbara has decided to take a small break from her career to start a family. I asked how this was going to affect her photography. Barbara replied, well, I don't think I'll be going to any more war zones. But I've spent so much time behind a camera lens that I can't possibly imagine a life without it. I expect becoming a mother will give her a new perspective, a new viewpoint. But fortunately, new viewpoints are exactly what photographers are always looking for. An exhibition of Barbara's work can be seen from the 3rd to the 20th of November at the Shawcross Gallery in Manchester. Okay then, so... Barbara... Okay, that's a crack in the window. I was going to say that's a bit... Can we open this? Right, so we need a key to get in the hidden wardrobe cupboard. Ooh, there's a hammer. Okay, that's, that's definitely a hammer, that, mate. Thank you very much. Slightly spooky picture, but never mind. Moving on. Art is, ooh. All down to interpretation. Miranda. Look, Miranda, we need to talk about last night. Don't worry about the marks. They'll heal up in a few days. What? I'm not talking about the marks. I mean the whole thing. Oh, sorry. I couldn't hang around this morning for round two. But work had a crisis and they can't seem to get anything done without me. You're not listening. We need to talk. Reminds me. I'm going to be busy for a bit. So my naughty little puppy better behave himself. Then when I'm back, we'll see what else we can do. Toodles. Okay, we'll talk then. Who's been shagging Miranda? Is there anything else? That's a dart. Okay. That's fine. Is there anything else? In the basement. Ooh, that we can look at. That's an apple. That's a rotten apple is what that is. There's cigarettes around the place. I don't think we've... There's a DVD. Will Smoke, Warren Boofer, and Jessica Marker. 
That's a blast from the past. Fair off, you don't even know what a bloody DVD is? I can't help but think at this point we're just clicking on shit to pick it up. Is there anything else? Oh, there's a letter. No, there's not. There's a bloody flyer for food. Excellent. Brian Scott. That was his guitar. Possibly. But there isn't a Brian that lives here, right? Did someone steal a guitar or borrow a guitar? They both kind of mean the same thing, don't they? Loosely. Um, I'm fairly, hello, confident that I've seen everything that I can in the basement, apart from this door. Combination lock. Okay. <laughs> well, at least you're not searching for a key, 43. Right. So there's a combination lock that we need. And there's also a key to the hidden Narnia wardrobe. Now, other than that, I think I've clicked on everything that I can in the basement. So let's go back upstairs and have a look at Tom's room. So this is as far as Tom goes. So we've got a potential event. I presume that might be as and when we open the door. So if we have a look for Tom's key in Tom's room, we might be able to find it and we might be able to unlock it. Where the bloody hell am I going? He's downstairs. Worldwide Collections, your Dutch bank credit card account. You owe £3,612.40. Dear sir, the legal owner of this debt, Dutch Bank PLC, would like to make you one final offer to resolve this matter amicably. Pay 50% and then pay £40 a month until you've paid off your balance. Okay. I mean, that seems fair. 14th of April 2015, so... About a month ago. Bottomley's Botanics. Is that how you say that word? I really don't know. Uh, it's bloody gardening is what it is. All your gardening needs... £35.40. Is that it? So you got Wonder Grow liquid feed. Potting compost. Leg bag? Is that? I don't know. Daylight bulbs times four cash. Okay. So we've done a spot of gardening, have we? Anything else over here? Hello. Okay, this is rent, is it? Paid, paid, paid. Late, late. Where is he? Put his things in the safe. Oh, there's a safe. Oh, that might be in the hidden room. Okay. So, Brian Scott. Oh, that, oh, oh, okay, right, yeah, it makes sense. So, Brian Scott is the, is the, 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 the musician-y dude that Linda is now in. Got you. Okay. So, the address is 40. Okay, so that's definitely here. Ah, oh, it's all bloody coming together now, isn't it? Anything in here? No, other than drawers and stuff. Oh, there's a letter there. Anything else? Okay. This is the last will and testament of Barbara Monroe, also known as Barbara Wilson of 14 Part. Ah, oh, so she owned the house, right? I give the remainder of my estate to my trustees. For my son, Tom Moore, if he survives me or if the foregoing gift fails for any reason, then to Alice Monroe. Oh, so we've got a sister. Okay. So the house and potentially other things got left to us. And the sister might not have been happy about that, maybe? Could it have been tampering from the sister then? And on that note, guys, I am going to leave that one there. So there's no key from what I can find so far in Tom's room. I think we're going to have to continue to go forward through his timeline. Watch a few more clips. Might be one of those things where you go forward to go backwards. Because I think that's the type of game that this is going to be. We're going to have to kind of go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So I'm convinced in Tom's timeline or someone else's timeline where they might be working together or whatever there'll be a clip where we see where he puts the key down or hides the key or whatever and then that means that we can then go back and, and see what's in the hidden room so i'm really enjoying my time with this game i think it's really different than all the other games i've been playing at the moment so it's a nice little breath of fresh air just to kind of take things slow hopefully you've enjoyed it look out for part two in the near future because i am really intrigued in terms of how this plays out so that being said thank you so much for watching and i shall see you in the next video take it easy guys bye bye yo